Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. I'm getting to the bottom of a little bit of focus. So good, so, so good. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have your cup of tea or maybe a cup of me. Today, we're gonna to be hanging out talking about what is happening with the market. When it comes to point and shoots going away, is there going to be a replacement? What can possibly save the industry? Because we know there's not a lot of people out there, there's a small percentage that can buy these really expensive ILCs, right? $2,000 cameras is really not in the price range for many people or for most. And that's why a lot of folks were buying compact point and shoot cameras, right? So at the time they were making a lot of money. Why? Because smartphones really weren't here yet. Let's say their cameras in the smartphones were really not that great. So people were still buying point and shoots. Well, this has slowly deteriorated over time since like about 2010, I think is when was this heyday when camera manufacturers were making a lot of money. And now we're down like 80 some percent into the tank. I think it was like 87% off the highs. I think in 2010, it was like 125 million cameras sold. And now in 2019, according to their numbers, we don't even have 2020 yet, but in 2019, I think it was like 15 million cameras. So you could just see the massive decline. Well, are there cameras out there that can possibly raise the market up? Now, Canon thinks so, because Canon, according to what I told you in the last video, they're really putting some money or a lot of money into conceptual cameras, things that are just concept based to see where they go. You know, what can they do with these? They started out with the Canon IV Record or Canon IV REC, okay? And it was a small little, let's say point and shoot, let's call it. It was more like a carabiner, right? That you would be able to take pictures and it was like weather sealed, uh, waterproof, I don't know, just, you could just beat the hell out of it and take photographs. Now, are the photographs that great? Well, I don't think so, but they're definitely, it does the trick for what it is. And that came out right around 2018. It was really interesting. You know what? I'm gonna run a quick video just so you can see what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna stop that because we don't wanna run it forever. But the, the gist of it is it's a small little carabiner type of thing, snap it onto your um, belt, let's say, pull it off, take a picture, and that's it. Super, super simple. And that's what they were looking for. They originally started out at about 100 bucks, and as of today, you can get them for about $49, just to get an idea of the price. Well, then as of late, I think it was the end of 2020, Canon came out with their PowerShot Zoom. And that was a pretty big thing too. But of course the price was a little bit different. It was $299, but instead of taking just photos, it was taking video and it was this weird form fact. Let me see, let me grab another video here. Check out this ad spot. So that just gives you a little bit of a just behind the PowerShot Zoom. So it was very interesting, very cool, nice concept. I mean, really small. The idea of it was there. Now, did it blow up? No, it didn't. But Canon continues down this path of making these concept imaging devices. Now they're coming out with a new one before the end of this month. It's called a PowerShot Pick, like PowerShot Pick. Very strange, P-I-C-K, not P-I-C either. So I'm like, what is this? Another one of these concepts. But I remembered about 2018 seeing this concept. And I was on YouTube going through some of the channels and I think it was the photography show. And they did an interview with one of the Canon reps and they showed this little dude it looked like. It was like a little guy. It looked like R2-D2. <laughs> And that is the damn camera. That is exactly it. Let me play this video real this quick. This is the one I want to show you first, which is this little one here. Now if we pick him up, I've got to stop you there, him. There is something robotic and quite cutesy <laughs> about this that makes you kind of want to personify it. Absolutely, and I think it's lovely. It's such a lovely looking camera. So that's pretty cool, right? So that is the camera 
that prototype is now coming out or is now going to be able to be pre-ordered before the end of the month. I think it's January 27th. Very interesting. Now, the rumored specs on this, now remember, whenever you're dealing with rumored specs, you don't know if they're going to be exact or whatnot, but what they're saying, it's going to be a 12 megapixel sensor in it. It is a one half point three inch CMOS sensor, which is basically a 7.66 millimeter diagonal, all right? So just to give you a point of reference, this is the smallest sensor like on the market currently. You'll see these um, in like the Pentex Q, in the Sony Cybershot, I think it's the W330. You'll find them in like a GoPro Hero 3, as well as a lot of the DJI stuff like a Phantom 3 or a Mavic 2 or these type of cameras. I think the Nikon P1900 also runs these little tiny sensors. So they're not great but they do the job and they're for very low cost type of video applications or photo applications. It's a very small sensor. Now the aspect ratio is a four by three, it's not a 16 by nine, so you gotta keep that in mind, the images that you're gonna get out of it. Now the 35 millimeter equivalent is like 19 millimeters to 57 millimeters with like a four times zoom in it or something. So it will definitely get you in there tight but remember, we're not gonna look that great once you do do any kind of zooming, especially digital zooming. Now, the pan is going to be 170 degrees, which is kind of nice. It's almost completely left to right, almost 180. Your tilt is 110 degrees, which is good. Now, it's going to have image stabilization, electronic image stabilization in it, which is nice. And it will be dust as well as waterproof. And you're looking at battery life at about two and a half hours total. That's what we're estimating here. And it will record to micro SD with a USB-C port. And of course, it'll have Bluetooth and it'll have Wi-Fi and whatnot. Now, remember, some of these, these rumored specs might change, but most likely not. It's pretty much, it's just about going to pre-order. We're only about, about a week away or something. So these are probably going to be accurate going forward. Now, this is a PTZ camera. Now people are like, what the heck is a PTZ camera? Basically it stands for pan, tilt, zoom. That's it, it's a PTZ camera. Now when you look up PTZ cameras, what pops up mainly are security cameras, right? You'll see them everywhere in parking lots or whatever and it's a head and it rotates just like what we see here. Tilt of 110, pan of 170. It's a way to follow and track someone. But what's happening with this camera is it's internal and it's going to track based on movement and maybe faces or eyes or whatever kind of recognition that it has built into it. AI once again, artificial intelligence. So it's going to track based on that and then snap photos on whatever randomness that it decides on. I don't know how it picks it, but it does. And it's going to snap photos in comparison to video. So like I said, these are, when you hear PTZ, you're always thinking about security cameras and this is very similar, but it is not. A security camera in this type of genre is like thousands and thousands of dollars. This will not be thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm gonna guess the mate, it'll probably be a couple hundred bucks, but we'll get into that in just a second. Now, I was looking for PTZ cameras from any other manufacturer. I looked up Sony and Nikon and Panasonic and Fuji and everyone else. The only companies that even have anything that is PTZ anything is Sony. And I think they started like a lot of money. And we have also, I believe, a Panasonic. Once again, a bunch of money. Nothing from Nikon, nothing from Fuji. They just don't have this type of imaging device. Now, there was one item that I did find that I've was kind of similar, and that was by Logitech, okay? Not a camera manufacturer, so to speak, kind of a peripheral manufacturer, right? And they put together a Logitech PTZ Pro 2. Now, that is a video camera that has that whole same functionality, but it goes for 800 bucks. Like I said, this is going to be PIC, hence the name, P-I-C-K, and not video. So chances are we're going to see probably about $200 for it. That's what I think. Don't quote me on it because we are guesstimating as of this point. Now, 
what is the use case of this? Who is this for? What is it? I look at this more as, well, let's call it an R2-D2 when you look at it, but I think of it more as a replacement to Aunt Sally. Right? You know, Aunt Sally comes to your wedding and you're like, hey, can I give you a purse full of all these disposable cameras? And as you're wandering around talking to people, can you just take some pictures, throw them back in your purse, and at the end of the night, I'll grab them and we'll develop them in the next week and see what we got. All right? And Aunt Sally's like, yeah. Now, Aunt Sally is a larger woman, so she doesn't get around as well. So the shots that you get, they'll be minimal. And you're probably going to get a, maybe about a one out of a hundred that are good. But when you do find one that's good, you're like, wow, if Aunt Sally didn't have these little compact throwaway cameras, I wouldn't have got the shot. And you see a lot of people doing that. A lot of brides have been doing it as of uh, the last couple of years where they'll throw a whole bunch of these disposable cameras on the tables and tell their guests, go ahead and just cover my wedding for me. <sighs> yeah, I don't want to get into all that. Anyways, I guess the equivalent to this new camera or this new proposed camera that's going to be pre-ordered at the end of the month, this power shot picks, it would be like Aunt Sally that you can stick on the top of like a gimbal or on the top of a 12 foot ladder. She is a little weighty. You don't know if she's going to fall. She could fall off. And you have to call a paramedic. Well, with this, you don't have to worry about Aunt Sally. This thing sits at the top of that 12 foot ladder and just pans around, tilts around and takes photos all night long. Well, for two and a half hours, whatever. Anyways, it takes photos and that's all that it does. And you're probably your good rate of return would probably be 1% also, just like Aunt Sally. Maybe Aunt Sally might be better. I don't know. But you will get some good images that you could not have gotten unless you had one of these at the top of the 12 foot ladder on the gimbal or a boom or some kind of arm or stuck in a corner someplace. It will capture things that you will miss. And that's what this is really all about. As that third photographer, fourth photographer, as your Uncle Buck or as your Aunt Sally. Okay. That's what this is really, in my personal opinion, all about. Now, Canon understands that creating ILCs like the EOS, the R5 is very, very important. And in my last video, I taught you guys about it, but what they also find equally as important, and they stated that equally as important is their new concept cameras. All right. Concept cameras is really important to them. Why? Because they are trying to find the next GoPro. And if you are a camera manufacturer and you're not trying to find the next GoPro, you're failing as a camera manufacturer, in my personal opinion. You can't do all of the same things over and over and over and think that you're going to continue doing them at nausea in perpetuity and just think that it's just going to be great. Okay. That's just not how it works. There is cycles. Right now, the cycle is showing that point and shoot cameras are done. Manufacturers like Nikon aren't making them anymore. The ones that are making them are making less of them and saying that they're going to put their R&D, their money into other things, more into the mirrorless full frame, mirrorless APS-C. But now, according to Canon, equally as much money in R&D will be going into these concepts, concept cameras. As we saw in 2018, this concept, this Aunt Sally that they made, came out as a prototype and now two years later, over two years later, it is out or almost out. It is going to be ready for pre-order by the end of this month, which I think is awesome. Now, I do believe, like I said, that all manufacturers need to somehow figure out how to supplement that inevitable loss of money when it comes to compact little point and shoot cameras that they were making a ton of money on. It's inevitable. It's they're gone. Now, where do we make that extra money? Remember, like I said, from the very beginning, a thousand two, three thousand dollar camera is not for everyone. OK, you need to come up with something that will make you a good amount of money at small little chunks, 200, 200, 200, 200, just like GoPros. Right. That camera isn't worth three, four hundred, five hundred bucks, but people buy it. Why? Because it's the best on the market. No one competes with them. They own 70, over 70 percent of that market, the action market, GoPro, okay? Canon wants that. And so does everyone else if they want to put the money and time into it. Now, what Canon does something different here, and I think that 
I really like it. And I did a quick search and they said that this was going to be coming out on the 27th for pre-order and they indicated the site was going to be M-A-K-U-A-K-E. Don't know the pronunciation, doesn't matter. It's a Japanese crowdfunding site. And when I went over here, now check this out. All right, let me share my screen. If I come over here and I type Canon, you know, I did that because I wanted to see if it came up immediately. It doesn't, but look what does come up. Do you see this? Do you notice something here? This is that, as of today, we know it as that IVREC. At the time, it was called an NISPIC, whatever, but they changed it to the IV. But there it is. This is that carabiner camera. But now look at the numbers, guys. As you can see here, they hit almost 1,500% over their original backing amount that they wanted for this. 1,500%. That is 14.8, or let's call it 14.9 million yen. <laughs> that is a lot. That comes to about $145,000 they raised in this crowdfunding period. That is crazy. Now, what I find interesting here is this camera is going to go to that same crowdfunding site. So that Canon PowerShot Pick will be able to be pre-ordered on that same crowdfunding site. That is cool. That just makes sense to me. Does that not make sense to you? I mean, it worked in the past, why not do it again? And they'll probably do it in the future also with any of these concept cameras. Why is that? Well, you find out market sediment. How do they feel about it, right? Is there enthusiasm for this thing or is there not? If they see something just shoot through the roof, they know, wow, we need to throw a ton of more money into this because obviously people are enthused about it. It's just simply smart business, right guys? Simply smart business. So I think that we're gonna see Canon do a lot more of this. We're gonna see these odd, weird R2-D2, Sally, Uncle Buck, whatever cameras, we're gonna see a lot of strange things, strange in quotes, coming from Canon. Canon is definitely a company that's similar to Sony that throws a whole bunch of shit on the wall and sees what sticks. And whatever sticks, that's where they go for. And I think that's why we're seeing crowdfunding when it comes to these concepts, because it simply makes sense. So I wanna know what your thoughts are. What do you think about this? Do you think other manufacturers are going to start doing the same type of thing to see if they can come out with like the next best GoPro that they can supplement that loss when we see point and shoots finally go completely the way of the dinosaur, all right? Do you think that they will do it? I have a feeling they almost have to, all right? They almost have to. I don't know, what is your thoughts? Anyways, if you like this content even a little bit, throw it a big thumbs up, that'd be awesome. Click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when I come out with a new video, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want to help the channel, click the little join button over here. You can become a member for a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever it is per month, and I can give you perks. That would be awesome, very awesome. And don't forget, put those comments in the comment area below this video, and after, join me over at our creative Discord server that I created for you guys, all right? I'm there hanging out all the time. You'll find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people no trolls allowed, great people with great ideas that want to just simply share. And all the people are discussing video, photo, and tech, all right? So there's a lot of different topics that are being discussed over there. Go check it out over at community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you made it to the end of this video, I wanna thank you. And if you use promo code YT20 at checkout, once again, YT20 at checkout, you're gonna get 20% off everything that's in your shopping cart. Not one thing, everything. Once again, promo code YT20. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another video. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.